welcome to this segment of Wealth Psychology at Sylvia Global Media. My name is Emily Bouchard. I am the managing partner at Wealth Legacy Group, and I'm here with Beth Greer, the author of Supernatural Home, and we are talking about how to live healthy in a very toxic world and toxic environments. And this has been a pretty eye-opening conversation and, you know, a little bit distressing in terms of, my gosh, there's a lot that's in our environments and a lot that we have to contend with. And we're going to talk a little bit about the emotional impact of all of that in our next segment. This segment, we're going to talk about our environment, what's around us, what we are exposing ourselves to unwittingly, and what we can do about it. So welcome back, Beth, and looking forward to hearing about what we are surrounding ourselves with. Well, um, you know, when I had my tumor and I was trying to look at what I can do to clean up my environment, so the first thing I took a look at was my household cleaners. Now, this is stuff that I've grown up with, Windex, for example. And I looked at the label, and you know what I saw in there? A warning on, on the label in big letters. It says, hazardous to humans and domestic animals. Now, why in God's day would anybody <laughs> want to use a product that says it, that has this warning label on it? I mean, that just, it, it, it really distressed me a lot. And um, so I started doing research about, you know, what, what to use instead. And so what I do um, is really simple. What grandma and great grandma used, vin white vinegar and hydrogen peroxide. So I take two spray bottles. I put uh, white vinegar in one, you know, pennies, and then hydrogen peroxide in the other. And How I much do you, do you dilute it or is it soft? Is it straight? It's straight. So, um, and I spray down my, my countertops and my wooden cutting boards and it kills, you know, Windex will say it kills 99.9% .9 of uh, bacteria and, and all that. So does this. It kills 99.9% .9 of E. coli, salmonella, bacteria. It's fantastic. Wow. And it's, does it stink though? I mean, it's a vinegar. I mean, that's... Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? Vinegar, it does smell. But as soon as it dries, the smell is gone immediately. Now, I've been experimenting. Sometimes I use some lemon essential oils. Um, I like that. Or some kind of citrus that I, I put a few drops in there and it, it, uh, it diffuses the smell of the vinegar. Oh, that's great to know. Wow, that's pretty simple. And like, what do you put it in? Like, is it just a oh, spray bottle you get at the drugstore? Or what, where, I, what do you? Yeah, I have it. Um, well, let me just. <laughs> For those of us who can see it, that's great. Um, I think that, you know, I would even take an old Windex bottle and put it in there. I mean, that's another possibility. And just, you would just write a label on it. And you could just say, um, this is a vinegar one. And you could just tape over the Windex and have it say what you want it to say. So um, here's what I found because I don't like using plastic so much because you know plastic isn't really it's not really recycled it's really uh, uh, it's uh, horrible for our environment and for global warming and so I found these metal uh, bottles and so I put see one with V for vinegar okay. and the other one for H for uh, hydrogen peroxide and okay. so I spray these. You just pour them into that. Great. Wow. Thank you. So yeah. metal as opposed to plastic. That's really good to know. And uh, what are other things in terms of what we surround ourselves with? You, you talked about fragrance before, and I, I know there's a lot of things like being sold on the market in terms of plug-in air fresheners and those uh, sprays that people use to freshen their bathrooms and, um, you know, scented candles. Can you talk a little bit about the scents and the fragrances and those things? Yeah, so scented candles are, you know, uh, one of my clients had a terrible uh, chronic cough, and she said, um, you know, the funny thing is that when I travel, when I go to sleep in hotels, I'm not coughing, so I'm thinking, well, aha, there's something in your house, obviously, that's causing you distress, you know, respiratory distress, and I walked into her bedroom, and she had scented, scented candles everywhere, um, so, you know, I found this, the, there's a scented can. I can't even open this because it smells so strong. You know, we were talking about the, the strength of the, um, of the, the scent. And on the back, you know, look for the Peel Here label um, that you see on many, many products, including your personal care products. It'll sometimes, um, if they can't put everything on the, on the front label, they have you peel here and then all of the other information. Wait, it's like a little novel. I mean, anybody who's looking, this is not like one little fold that you pull a peel back. There's pages on the back of a tiny little candle. And there's warnings and all that. So, okay, so what I love to use instead is I go to the, the farmer's market and I buy um, a beeswax candles and they're fantastic. 
so sick I have one. Um, yeah, and I've heard that they, they take longer to burn and that they're actually good for you. Like what happens, what they let off in the environment is not a bad thing. That's true. Like this, so this is a beeswax candle, and if you notice, it has a cotton wick. You want to look for um, a wick that doesn't have a little metal, um, a, a little metal thread in there. That's lead, and oh. so you're going to be breathing in those those lead fumes. And you know, I know there are people that who burn a lot of these candles. If you look up at the top of their ceiling, you'll see black soot, and that's lead actually. So you, you want to avoid that. Oh um, my gosh. I, it's just so counterintuitive. You think about how like lead paint was this huge thing, and you have to make sure that we don't have lead in our paint, which you know is painted on our walls. And you're talking about something that's in our air that would be burning right into where we're breathing. Right, and you know most people are not aware that, of those little metal sticks in the in there. They put it in to make the candle burn longer, but what is it doing to our health? And it's so unnecessary. You know, I just I have a. A dream, Emily, that, you know, in five years that we could just look back and say that this was absurd, that they were, um, these manufacturers are putting all this crap in our, in our products that are making us ill. And that I would just love to just look back and say, wow, can you believe that we had all this stuff and now it's gone? And you know what the, the good news is that we have so many choices now of healthy products. There, you know, it's fantastic. More and more manufacturers are coming out. New healthy green products are coming out every year, and so there's no excuse not to be able to stay healthy. And you know, because you because you have access to them. Yeah, and I, I want to bring up how we can make a difference, not just in our own homes, but in a more a larger scale. And there was a great example of. Uh, there's a company called Free Range Press, and they uh, put out really clever and uh, creative cartoons and uh, animations online that really educate people. And one of them was uh, this hilarious little gumshoe uh, detective story. And he was, um, I think he was a sponge, and he was a detective. And then a little rubber ducky came to see him, and she said, you know what? this new duck I'm seeing, I don't think he's made of rubber. And he does all this research and he finds out that the other duck was made of this awful off-gassing um, uh, like plastic instead of rubber. And uh, the shower curtain that had the same kind of plastic and the liner, and tons of research has been done to show that these linings off-gas these things that are really dangerous for us. And because of that viral campaign, um, I'm, my, I don't want to be mistaken in terms of which, it was either Target or Walmart, I think it was Target, was targeted to take this off of their shelves. And they did. They took all of anything that was labeled with this particular thing off of their shelves so that consumers were, there was an outcry because of this one cartoon that went viral. And then they stopped a company from uh, stocking that. That's true. You know, uh, that's called PVC, uh, polyvinyl chloride. And um, it's very, very toxic, and it's that it's that new curtain shower curtain smell, or we smell it in beach balls and all that. And there's no reason to, to use it. There are there are great substitutes. And you're right, having a, a video like that to educate people um, has a, has a fantastic impact. And things are changing. You know, um, BPA is another example. They're they taking it out of baby bottles now. Bisphenol A, which is you know again we're, we're talking about hormone disruptors. However. People need to understand that manufacturers are putting in another chemical, so um, they're putting in something called BPS and it hasn't been tested yet. So we really have to be on top of these manufacturers, you know, to really be transparent. So that's where um, you want to use a glass baby bottle instead of plastic, and then you don't have to worry about it. There you go. That's exactly right. Use glass instead of plastic. Wow. That's exactly my point because. Just because something says BPA free, you think that might be safe. It's it might not necessarily be the best. So go back to the the uh, the, the most natural products that you can find, like like glass or metal. Okay, so let's look at um, something as simple as dryer sheets. Like to have a nice uh, like fabric softener, have your sheets come out yummy and soft. Is that a bad thing? Oh please don't get me started on dryer sheets. There's that's one of the worst, most toxic thing because that fragrance. And you know, uh, I remember I was at a barbecue once, and there was a professional chef there, um, and there were bees around, and he had these dryer sheets next to the the grill. I said, "What is this here for?" He says, "Well, the bees hate the dryer sheets." And it was like, 
okay, you, these little bees are smarter than, than us human beings because they know that, you know, this is something to, to avoid. And I would really avoid at all costs dryer sheets. Well, that's so, so interesting. I was visiting my parents in Houston and there was a big problem with the mosquitoes and um, the flu virus that they were transmitting. And my dad, you know, before we went for a walk, he said, here's a dryer sheet. And we had to rub it all over our feet and our ankles and on the dog. And I was like, well, you guys aren't using this on your clothes, are you? Yeah. <laughs> it was just... There you go. Absolutely. So the insects are, are avoiding it because they know it's toxic. So it's toxic for us because think about it. The dryer sheet in the heat, it get the chemicals get onto our fabric, and then when if we sweat, it's getting into our, it's, it's being absorbed into our bodies, into our bloodstream. So you know, Trader Joe's makes some great um, uh, lavender sachets that you can throw in there. Um, there are some dryer sheets that you can find at Whole Foods that don't contain toxic chemicals. So really, something to pay attention to. A very simple thing, and you want to avoid it. Wow. These are such useful tips. Um, I want to talk in our next little bit about um, things that we use that we use to cook our food with because they're in our environment, but they also impact our food. So there's two things I want to talk about. One is nonstick cookware because I've heard a lot of controversy about that. 